This video will be concerning mental illness, narrow versus broad definitions, and an incident that happened in Seattle involving the zombie woman. Uh, I might even put it in the title of the video. I'm not trying to get page views for that. I found it obnoxious that a bunch of people were bringing up something that was a debunked story. It doesn't matter if it's UFOs or Bigfoot. Okay, it wasn't Bigfoot, it was your, it was your cousin Fred. Um, if someone brings up a story by recycling it from years before, I will debunk it. No one will little, the world will little note nor long remember what I say today is one of my favorite, very famous quotes. So my video got some views. Okay, that's fine. Um, the only attention I got was thank yous and oh my god, I didn't believe, I can't believe I believed that. And one person getting annoyed by me not crediting them when I, it's the first thing I credited. But anyway, here we move on. Was the lady doing the zombie, uh, the Seattle zombie woman protest, which it is, which concerned vaccines and masking, was she also mentally ill? If a person can fake being a zombie or being medically compromised by altering their appearance to look like a severely injured, medically compromised person, I'm not sure if you understand this, but this could also mean that they can fake being mentally ill. Well, you can't fake that. That is a gigantic ball of bullshit. Um, if you believe that. Yes, people can fake being mentally ill. Well, I saw a documentary. You saw a documentary where they had reenactments. You mean an actor play acting being mentally ill, correct? I've actually had that conversation with a couple of people. Well, it, it was done very well. Was it an actor pretending to be insane? I don't like the tone of your voice. You don't like the tone of your failure to prove a point. Again, I debunk things even if they're really old stories. In fact, if it's a very old story, if someone digs it back up again. People do that. Necro posting, I think it's called sometimes. So, where is the information from the hospital? A person who's taken to the hospital for any medical reason can demand privacy. And unless it's absolutely important... For public disclosure, and only if it's going to benefit them, is the hospital required to give out the information. The individual themselves is allowed to give out the information, whether it's in their best interest or not, but not the hospital or not the police department. If it's of massive concern to a majority of the people in the area, and or it's a health crisis issue for everybody else to deal with, disclosure is allowed. It's not part of HIPAA, some idiot I heard, you might have heard, quoting that, who's a politician, but it is along those lines. You have a right to privacy. Next, she may have put on makeup, but her mental health is of real concern. The mental illness is real. Did the medics say something? They're not allowed to tell you, but if they did, I can't find it anywhere. What happened after she was admitted to the hospital? None of her business. Next, let me reiterate this to get it done. This is a person faking being a physically and mentally damaged person due to being given a vaccine. She did it as a public a publicity stunt and a public protest against vaccines, masks, etc. I might sound like a callous jerk, but this is a person faking virtually everything a part of this or all of it. Why can't it just be all of it? Next, she showed, and this is what little I can find, no sign of mental illness by normal definitions that we have for her behavior. And afterwards, nothing either. And she's still working as a makeup artist. She's just torn down a lot of her social media because people found it and started harassing her because this was a dumbass thing for her to do. And also because people started asking her, well, we, we know you're mentally ill, that, that's a problem. From her perspective, she might be saying, oh, me being a pro-Trump person means I'm mentally ill. Is that it? I, mean, I don't know what her mental state is on that is, but there's no indication she's locked up anywhere. So now I'm going to go off on a completely different tangent. And you're allowed to get angry because everybody has an opinion, especially if they're trying to be an ally. I'm a computer security geek. I'm nearsighted. My eyes go in two different directions. I have a bunch of medical problems that I'm slowly healing up from 10 years ago. Uh, missing my front teeth from a bike accident because they got shattered but never pulled or dealt with because there was nothing to fix because I didn't have the money. Finally got them pulled this year to the graces of some very generous people. 
and I'm able to do a few things for myself. I can make my own glasses. I'm still capable of surviving being hit by a car, apparently, and healing up at 50 plus. And <clears throat> some of you might not know or may have heard, I had a habit of stuttering when I was younger. This is an acquired speech defect. It's not a disease of the cerebral spinal cord or epileptic seizure. It is not a sign of mental illness or being dumb or anything else that people would look down on you for. It was stuttering. People have that happen when they're 12. Um, but speech impediments did exist. I adapted to one problem by creating others. A lot of you do that. I do that too. Um, and having a mouthful of teeth at one time that were damaged, shattered, and splintered caused me to change my speech a lot. One of the ways of getting around this was to do YouTube videos, like I'm doing now. And I did dozens, I mean, an embarrassingly large number of bad takes and kept making myself do it. Now, what is the rest of the video going to be about? Obsessive compulsive disorder is not a mental illness. Now, I understand that you, if you look up the definition for mental illness and obsessive compulsive disorder and read them, yeah, I know that. But that's like hearing the words, gravity is a fictitious force. There's the common term used in ordinary communication, and then there's the technical term. Me explaining to you that you're not dealing with a virus, you're dealing with a botnet, is not a subtle goddamn difference. Shut up and look it up. But, uh, most of you don't care. <laughs> because it doesn't matter. It's something malicious the computer's doing. Malware. Good word. It's generalized. It's not precise at all. But it's the best word in general. And one of the subsets is a botnet, and one of the subsets is viruses and whatever. And there's hundreds of things, that, I mean, variations. I mean, go read the Wikipedia article. It's faster than me talking about it. The point I'm making here is there's precise answers that keep misleading the public, and then there's practicality. Obsessive-compulsive disorder is an issue with the way, well, is based on diagnosing a person by what they do in response to certain stimulus. It has nothing to do with the underlying problem, which may be organic, induced by head impact, uh, a chemical imbalance in the brain, a genetic issue, anything you want to think of. There's, I mean, pretty much anything you want to. And some of those aren't really mental illnesses. They are <sighs> mental disabilities. It's a better word for it. A mental disability is the equivalent to saying, well, he's acting stupid versus someone shot him through the head and he's, an, he's a military vet. He didn't die from a bullet wound to the head. That's a little different than saying, oh, he's stupid. No, part of his brain was destroyed from a bullet. In my case, part of my brain is defective, actually a lot of it, due to an imbalance in the brain chemistry. What does that mean? It's not actually an imbalance. The brain is not processing one of the chemicals in it called serotonin correctly. I have obsessive compulsive disorder, and it's biologically induced. It has nothing to do with anything else. There are some people who have OCD, and it's induced in some way. That's very different than the other. M medication might treat me, but not treat them, and vice versa. And in my case, I don't have to use medication because by the time I found out what the hell it was called, I'd adapted so much to it that they're like, yeah, you can do some cognitive therapy, and that's it. And then I ran into one of those experts who decided, no, everybody with OCD, you know, painting with a broad brush, has to have this treatment and use these medications or they're in denial. And I, and I immediately jumped to the conclusion because you knew I was going to. Just because you had to go through AA doesn't mean the rest of us are drunks. And I stared at him just like that. And I said, I'm one of those people that will make you at this outreach location Say that in front of every one of your current victims because you victimized them. Oh, really? Yeah, because I'm the director of the place and I'm doing all the computer work here. And I can shut everything off. He had to apologize to 60 people that he generalized and did not help and made worse over the last month because he was simply wrong. And he was a college student and he was a know-it-all and you can't do that. 
And the thing is, even if you know dead ass what caused a problem with someone, you can still get it wrong. Um, of the Everest versus a molehill thing. If you're doing something that seems to solve the problem, great, that's treatment, diagnosis, blah, blah, blah. But the brain, fixing the brain, if you get lucky and can do it, you may have affected the equivalent to a cubic foot of dirt on Mount Everest. That may be all that is wrong, and you may have fixed it, but you don't know about the rest of it. You don't know jack shit. The human brain is an incomprehensibly complicated goddamn thing, and you're not an expert. And one of the first things they tell you, whether you're a brain surgeon or a psychiatrist, is if you immediately assume you're, aha, I got it, you're an idiot, and you're going to fuck someone up. So when I hear people say OCD, meaning all OCD, is a mental illness, it makes me want to just scream in their face. And the mother superior, the motherfucker superior attitude they come up with when they say I'm wrong and they can prove it because there's a book, and then I point them to the little paragraph that says, Many, ver many, many variations on the OCD diagnosis, which is all it is, it's a diagnosis, are caused by many things that should not really be qualified as mental illnesses. It's an illness of the mind caused by something, but using the word mental illness not only has a stigma, it's a grossly inaccurate statement. In my case, it's serotonin reuptake problems. I need serotonin reuptake inhibitors or something. Or maybe um, it's a genetic issue where my brain doesn't process things correctly. Whatever. In my case, it's in the form of never really feeling like I've finished something. That satisfaction of, oh, I finished the last, I checked off the last box. My brain just creates the sensation I didn't check off the boxes. Uh, I remember very distinctly, under extreme stress, I wasn't able to go to work because I couldn't finish locking the door. I didn't feel that I'd locked the door. I could mentally understand that I locked the door. And I went in and I said, I can't show up to work. Why? I don't understand why. And my boss just said, just show up. Don't show up for work. Just show up. For the rest of the time I worked, I never went to work. I just went there to the same building I always went to when I was, it was a computer shop, geek head shop. So I just went to the job site, but I just went there like a customer and then, oh, okay, yeah, I work here. By getting rid of this, whatever the hell blockage it was, I could go to work. I literally never went to work again in my mind. Is that mental illness? No, that's called being able to go to work every day and finding some way to do it. Every one of you does that. If you didn't, well, you weren't going, were you? Some of you never go to work. It's just a place you go to, you know, fill in time before breakfast, after breakfast, and before you come home to have lunch and whatever. That's kind of the thing. Every one of you compensates for reality and deals with it. If you don't deal with it, then you look crazy. Some lady being in denial that a virus exists and it's literally disrupted the whole planet because it's just too big to handle in her head and deciding that she's going to do a, an outlandish thing and freak out like this for effect, to promote herself, to make herself famous, maybe get a bunch of really loyal customers that are all as crazy as sounding as she is, that doesn't mean she's mentally ill. That's just called being part of a cult. You know, like any religion, any political group, any any group of people that are passionate about something. They embrace things that are not real. That is not legally defined, nor is it properly defined as mental illness. And basically, the mental illness was real. The lady was attempting to emulate a person who is a zombie. The modern term for that refers to something that cannot be killed, that is diseased, that is a monster. She was play-acting. I think saying the mental illness was real would be more of a thing she would treat as an insult. If I was acting a part as a street performer and not being an asshole like she was because she assaulted some cops, I'd be highly insulted. 